Thanks a lot. We'd appreciate if people had some cat stories, and then we'd play along with you. My name is Rich, and I never had a cat, so I decided to tell <laughs> someone else's story. There's this eccentric lady that used to hang out at Moo Moo's, and her name's Dr. Jenny. And if you can picture Austin Powers at age 60 with red hair, and happen to be a woman, that would be Dr. Jenny. <laughs> anyway, she did some remarkable things in her retirement. She convinced the army to uh, ship fallen soldiers pets back to America to their families and that took her over two years and I thought what better way to tell her story than from the perspective of someone who had to deal with this person from the military I remember going to the movies before I joined the army they were showing a fresh print of Stanley Kubrick's full metal jacket and I wanted to prepare myself for boot camp. It was pretty intense, but I remember laughing out loud when Matthew Modine talked about why he volunteered. I want to go to Vietnam, meet interesting and stimulating people of ancient cultures, and kill them, he says. So six years later, when I got to Afghanistan, I found that war wasn't like that at all. In fact, it was kind of the reverse. See, I'm the last guy you want to meet when you're in country. I'm the mortuary affairs officer. The guy that packs you up in the transfer tube and sends you home. They don't call them body bags anymore. It's morning on base and the coffee is cold and bitter. Corporal Janice comes in with a clipboard, but he doesn't hand it to me right away. Instead, he's mumbling about some raid last night in Kandahar, 20 clicks to the east. I motion for him to hand me the thing and he hesitates. Last night, he says, handing me the clipboard, Private Hansen, I believe you knew him. I read the report, Hansen's squad was on patrol when insurgents ambushed him. He jumped in the way of a bullet meant for his buddy. Under the report is a manila envelope, it says, from Dr. Jenny Feinstein. What the fuck is this? I asked Corporal Janice. He winces a bit and says she stopped by again this morning with the envelope. She said it has something to do with Private Hansen. She said it was urgent that she needs to speak to you, he says. You're supposed to read it before you tell her no. Dr. Jenny's been a pain in my ass since she arrived last month. She's some kind of animal rescue nut. She cornered me at the USO. It was a really bad day. There was a roadside IAD, five dead. She started babbling about orphan dogs, and I was drunk and pissed off, and I wouldn't have any of it. I breathe a sigh of disgust and rip open the envelope. There's two photos. The first is a picture of Private Hansen. He's smiling away in his fatigues, and he's holding a fucked up looking cat with a mohawk kind of haircut. I look at the photo for a while. Hansen was a good kid, bright, well liked. I taught him how to shoot pool. Uh, sir, she's, she's back. I'm about to bite the corporal's head off when I see the second picture. It shows a much younger Dr. Jenny. She's pushing a stretcher in front of a medical tent. Looks like a mass unit, Vietnam. Attached to the photo is a sticky note, and it simply says, hear me out. Janice shows her in, and I ask her to close the door. Dr. Jenny is not the package you might expect for a crusader. She's tiny, thick glasses, British, 60-ish, maybe five foot with heels on. Thank you for seeing me today, Lieutenant, she says. I want to talk to you about Private Hansen's pet. His unit already packaged up his property, I tell her. We're flying his remains home on the C-130 in the morning. I need your help to get his cat home, she says. Only you can sign the order to put him on that plane. I look at her. His kitty cat is not the Army's concern. We need to return this soldier to his family and put him to rest. 
Look, Lieutenant, she says, that cat was all he had in country. He rescued the animal from the streets when it faced certain death, and he nursed it back to health. I'm sorry, I tell her, the Army has protocol for everything when it comes to a fallen soldier. The funeral procession, the honor guard, the way the flag is wrapped, everything. So I hand her the picture back with, of Hanson with the Mohawk cat, and I tell her there's simply no protocol for this. Dr. Jenny looks at me for a moment. For a sec, I think she might be giving up, but instead she hands me another photograph. You see that dog? His owner was killed in Iraq. When that mutt got off the plane at Air Force Base Dover, it ran right to the boy's family in the middle of a crowd, even though the dog had never met them. The thing is, all the pets we bring back, they do the same thing. And why are you showing me this, I ask her. Private Hansen, she says, don't you think this is what he would have wanted? When Dr. Jenny leaves, there is no gloating, just a hug, which I reluctantly accept. The little mink grabs my ass, though. No one's watching after all, but if my CO catches any wind of this, I'm never going to hear the end of it. And like that guy in the movie, I find myself wanting to travel to strange places and meet exotic people. For now, I don't get to go. I just send them back. It's a bad rap, so please don't blame the messenger. When I can, I'll send you a little piece of their soul, even if it's just fucked up looking cat from the other side of the world. Thank you.